Okay, good evening, everyone. We're on chapter 26 of Kitzur Shachar Now, the truth is that chapter 26, um, the way it's presented, is not so relevant practically nowadays, as you'll see momentarily. And I did consider skipping it, but I chose not to skip it for a number of reasons. Um, firstly, because um, even though it's not relevant exactly the way it says it, there are things that we derive from it that are relevant. Um, number two, there are many interesting halachas and customs and understanding the structure of certain halachas that are mentioned here uh, parenthetically, which are certainly very useful. And thirdly, I think it's um, there's something very interesting about the, the, the calculations or the I, I, the mathematics of it, if you will, and it gives you a, it gives us a little bit of a an insight into what society was like, um, yeah, and how how people approached minhag and davening and saying kaddish and all of these things. I was, we'll see in a moment. So, sort of from a historical perspective, this simon and the poskim that talk about it is always it, it's fascinating in a way. So basically, it this simon introduces the concept of saying Kaddish after a parent passes, and it goes into all the intricacies of what to do if there's more than one person in the shul. Now, the way it works nowadays, the custom by and large for most, in most congregations, most, most Ashkenazi and Sephardi congregations, is that all the mourners say Kaddish together. So there's certain Kaddishim throughout the davening which are uh, for the chazan to say. And then there are certain which are for the mourners to say. We call them mourner, mourners Kaddish or Kaddish Drabana. And all the mourners say those in unison. However, originally the custom used to be, and this is still the custom of some communities, um, it's the Yekish Minhag. And, by, and I think that actually, yeah, just remembering, uh, a couple of years ago, I was davening Mincha. I spent a few hours in Yeshiva University in YU. Uh, Bill, you can ask me something more about this. Um, so I davened Mincha there. And I noticed, like, it was interesting. Like, I noticed, like, you know, it was a room full of people. And there was only one person saying, Kaddish, there must have been a few hundred people there. And, you know, okay, there was a lot of young people. It was mainly, yeshiva, you know, school kids. But still, it's it's unusual where you, that you're davening in a room of a few hundred people, and only one person is saying Kaddish. Um, and but afterwards, I heard that indeed in YU, Rabbi Shechter, um, the Rosh Hashiva, has instituted to revert to the old minhag um, that only one person says Kaddish. Now I don't know why Rabbi Shechter chose to do that, but Paskim do point out that it is very important that when you do have multiple people saying Kaddish, that they actually say it as much as possible word for word in unison. Um, and I, that's something which many shuls struggle with and whatever, some people turn the blind eye to it. But if you are ever saying Kaddish, um, you should really try your best um, to say it as much as possible word for word in unison with everyone else. Um, so uh, the, the, a big chunk of what this chapter is going to be talking about is what to do when there's more than one person who says Kaddish, how do you divide, how do you divide out the, Kad, the Kaddishim, which is the plural of Kaddish, how do you divide them between the various people? And basically we're going to see that there are um, one, two, three, four, five statuses of people. Yeah, five or six statuses of people. Um, sorry? Our status is the people who would want to say Kaddish and eat, and you know, and there's a whole hierarchy. Is somebody asking a question or is it just background noise? Bill, I'm going to unmute you just yeah, in case you want to ask something, feel free to unmute. Um, so, so, like I said, nowadays this is perhaps less relevant because for the most part we all have the custom to say Kaddish, all to, uh, as many people can say Kaddish together. Um, but nevertheless, a lot of these things are still relevant 
because there's also the minhag, which it mentions in this simon, that somebody who, that, that a mourner, or somebody who was saying Kaddish should daven for the Ahmed. So there you also have, well, if there's two people who want the Ahmed, and so, so what do you do? Who takes, who takes precedent over, over who? So there are five or six statuses. The first is somebody who is within the days of Shiva, within the first week of Shiva. Um, so that's one level of uh, obligation in the hierarchy. The second level is somebody who's within the first 30 days, within the days of Shleshim. And the third, and, and, and the, the third level, well, not, not going here in order of levels, just going chronologically, um, is somebody who's within within the year of mourning or within the first 11 months of mourning, but past the first 30 day mark. Number four is somebody who has yard site. And number five is somebody who's on the last day of his 11 months of saying Kaddish. And um, we'll see, it's very intricate how it all, uh, I looked around to see if I could find charts and not time to make charts, but, um, Okay, let's start. Again, I think there's going to, some, going to be some very interesting things which we encounter in this symbol. Many stories are told in Midrashim, indicating that because the son said Kaddish for his father or mother, they were saved from heavenly judgment. Yeah, the most famous of these stories is the story of um, Rebbe Kiva, who um, encountered a neshama who was suffering for a very long time in the hereafter, and Rebbe Kiva taught his son how to daven and how to say Kaddish, Kedusha, and Baruch, and as a result of that, as a result of that, he alleviated the pain um, that was being inflicted on the on his father's nisham. It is therefore customary for a mourner to say Kaddish. Number one, to say Kaddish. Number two, to be called up to Maftir, which it's interesting because outside of Chabad, this is not so common, but in Chabad, it is quite common for somebody who's in the mourner to, as often as possible, be called up to Maftir and also to act as a chazan before the congregation, especially on Matzah Shabbos, the ending of Shabbos, which is the time when all the souls return to Gehenna. So this is an interesting thing. On Shabbos, the Nishamas get a, uh, get a break. They get a, a rest from Gehenna, and they go back after Shabbos. So um, nevertheless, we still say Kaddish on Shabbos, but saying Kaddish on Dominant for the Ahmed um, or here talking about specifically Daven for Ahmed on Matzah Shabbos it is a specifically important time to do so because that is a particularly um, difficult time for the Neshama returning to Gehenna. The same holds true for every evening. For then judgment is rendered with great severity. Evening is a time of severity, of Gevura. The morning is a time of Chesed, and Avram, and Avshachris is corresponds to Avram, who's corresponds to kindness, and the evening is a time of severity, even though Yitzchak is severity, that's what it says. Now, concerning the Kaddish, there are many divergent rules in accordance with the various local customs. And he goes on to say what they are. By the way, it's interesting to note that the Mishnah Bura, on the Simon Kuflam and Beis and Shukhan the Mishnah Bura and Halacha, has a very, very long essay on analyzing these halachas with much greater detail than the Kittah Shulchan Aruch does, um, which we're not going to get into because, it's, like I said, it's not that relevant. But it's interesting how, it's, it's just fascinating to see how this was such a major, you know, only one person could say Kaddish and there was all these negotiating, you know, everybody wanted to make sure that they got the most Kaddish possible, and they were all, you know, you had to sort of come with your points to the table and see how many um, Kaddish you deserve to get. Okay. Now, a couple of points of introduction to see face to number two. First of all, um, all these laws only apply in shul. If a per person is sitting shiva in his own home, then obviously he says the kadeshim. He has a minion in his own home, and uh, that's not up. That's not what we're discussing over here. Here we're discussing in the shul, how does the shul um, distribute the Kadesh? And therefore you'll see, he mentions a number of times it comes up that when he's talking about within the days of Shiva, we're either talking about the Shabbos of Shiva, or we're talking about a child, a child under Bar Mitzvah who doesn't sit Shiva. Um, there's different customs about that, but the Kiddush is going 
with the custom that a child on the bar mitzvah would not sit shiva. So, but he might be going to shul to say Kaddish. So then the child gets precedent over other people within the days of shiva. And then there's another very important thing to mention. And this, um, I've seen this come up numerous times, all sorts of um, scenarios. Um, for example, you know, um, in, in Chabad, the custom is that if somebody is saying Kaddish, whether he's a mourner or a yard site or whatever it is, then he says the Kaddish after laning. Now, after laning, only one person could say that Kaddish. It's not like a mourner's Kaddish that everybody says together. Only one person says the Kaddish after laning. So there is another scenario where even nowadays we have to go get into this and say, well, who takes precedent over here? So, so we have, this is it's something which I've seen many people um, mistake about, and um, I'm gonna to try to explain it um, clearly here. We have these benchmarks. We have the seven days, which we call the days of Shiva. We have the 30 days, the days of Shoshim. And usually when we talk about those, those timeframes, the week and the month, we're talking in vis-a-vis -vis the laws of mourning. Um, so the certain laws of mourning that apply for seven days, you have to wear, you, you wear the ripped to your jacket, you, um, you sit on a low stool, um, you're not allowed to study Torah, you're not allowed to be intimate with your wife, um, et cetera, et cetera. Then there's laws that apply for the 30 days, no haircuts, no, et cetera, et cetera. Laws of mourning. Kaddish is not mourning. It, Kaddish is a practice that a mourner does. It coincides with the practice of mourning, but it is not in and of itself a practice of mourning. It's a mitzvah that the mourner is doing on behalf of the neshama of his parent. Right? So for example, just, just one, one area where this distinction is clearly manifest is Shabbos. On Shabbos, there's no public display of mourning. So even during the week of Shiva, the, sh the other will come to shul and wear Shabbos clothing and wear leather shoes and sit on a regular chair, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Why? Because there's no public display of mourning on Shabbos. But nevertheless, he still says Kaddish. Ah, if he says Kaddish, everybody's going to know, hey, he's saying Kaddish now. He wasn't saying Kaddish last week. He must be in Shiva. So you're going to give away, you're going to give it away that he's in Shiva. No, so how could you do that? The answer is because saying Kaddish happens to coincide with mourning, but it isn't in and of itself a practice associated with mourning. Um, now, now, where does this become uh, um, a little bit more tricky? What happens if for whatever reason, the, law, the, law, the laws of mourning have already been suspended, A, or B, they haven't yet begun. So for example, if a person passes away three days before Pesach, so Shiva finishes, Shiva finishes um, when Pesach starts. Yom Tif cancels Shiva. But Yom Tif only cancels the morning aspect of Shiva. It doesn't cancel the, the, the kind of, in other words, in other words, there's um, there's a certain precedent, a certain value to the kaddish that is said within the first seven days, which overrides kaddish said the rest of the year, right? So as we'll see in a moment, if there's two people in shul and one of them within, is within shiva and one of them is in month number five, right? So the one who is in shiva overrides the one who's in month number five because his kaddish is more, let's say, is the kaddish of the person who's in shiva is more integral to the welfare of his parents' neshama, then is the Kaddish of the person who's in month number five, right? But as far as these seven days are concerned, even though the morning of Shiva may already ended, because now it's Pesach, but the, the, the value of the Kaddish is seven days, regardless of whether it's Pesach, whether you're actually sitting Shiva or not. Yeah, is that clear? Right. The same is true the other way around. If a person passed away on Cholamayat, so the Levi is on Cholamayit, but he doesn't start sitting Shiva until after Yom Tif. So for those first seven days, even though he hasn't even started the morning of Shiva yet, he's only going to start that after the Yom Tif is over. Nevertheless, for those seven days, he has precedent because I am because he is now 
within seven days. It's not the morning of Shiva, it doesn't coincide. And here you can have a strange scenario where after Shiva, yeah, he could, let's say he doesn't have a minion in his house and he's coming to Shul after Yom Tiv and he's sitting Shiva. So he could be within the morning of Shiva and sitting with, with non-leather shoes on the floor and with a ripped jacket, but he doesn't have the precedent of over somebody else because he's no longer within the seven day morning period. Sorry, he's so he is within the morning the morning period of the seven day, but he's not within the Kaddish um, um, morning uh, seven day period. And then one final um, example of this is this is relevant to every person who ever sits shiva. Whenever you sit shiva, um, yeah, you get up from shiva on the seventh day in the morning. So the morning practices of shiva. Finish in the morning, yeah. Morning with a U and morning without a U. The, 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 the morning practices finish in the AM. But you still have another prayer, the prayer of Mincha in the afternoon of the seventh day. So even though for that during that Mincha prayer, you're now finished, quote unquote, sitting Shiva, you're still within the seven-day period as far as Kaddish is concerned. By the way, I mentioned before one thing I forgot to say. I mentioned before five or six, right? So what would the five? The five were within Shiva, within 30 days, within the 11 months, a yard site, and somebody on the last day of the 11 months. And a sixth thing that factors in is whether the person is a guest or a resident, or a visitor or a resident. Now, later on, we're going to go into exactly how we define a visitor and how we define a resident. But that's also factored into the hierarchy of who overrides who. Um, somebody who belongs over here, who's a local, is going to take precedent over somebody who's just a visitor. Okay, let's read Sif Beis. Hopefully after those introductions, Sif Beis will be clear. During Shiva, whether the mourner is a minor or an adult, so in other words, whether he's a minor and that's why he's in shul or an adult, and the reason he's in shul is maybe because it's Shabbos, whether he is a resident or a visitor, he is entitled to say all the Kadesh precluding all other mourners. Right? So if somebody is in month number five, and there's somebody within Shiva, the person in month number five says zero Kadeshim, and the one the one within Shiva says all of it. And even if a festival occur, occurs during Shiva, which cancels the rules of the Shiva as far as mourning practices are concerned, or if the festival occurs after Shiva, which cancels the rules of Shloshim, right? That's another thing, right? If, 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 if Pesach... Uh, if, if, if Pesach comes in the middle of Shiva, it cancels Shiva. If it comes in the, after the Shiva, but in the middle of the 30 days, it cancels that, right? So then also, nevertheless, this does not nullify the laws of Kaddish. Likewise, relative to Kaddish, we do not apply the principle that part of the day is considered as the whole day, right? The reason why you get up from Shiva in the morning of the seventh day, even though the mitzvah is to sit Shiva for seven days, so why are you getting up in the morning? The answer is because a part of the day is considered as a whole day. So as long as you've practiced morning for some of the day, we say that's considered like you've practiced it for the whole day. By the way, the same is true for day number one. Day number one um, starts after the funeral, even though maybe only be a couple of hours left of the day. That counts as the whole day, right? Thus, even at Mincha of the seventh day, the mourner has the right to say all the Kadesh. Then he says, the Shiva and Shleshim are counted from the day of the burial. Even if the mourner was not yet informed of his loss immediately and began to observe the seventh day of the morning afterwards, Yet, with regard to saying Kaddish, the rules of Shiva do not apply in this case, right? So here's another example, um, which I did not mention in my introduction. If, let's say, again, it's more, it's rare that this happens nowadays with uh, the communication that we have, but back in the day, it wasn't so unheard of that a person didn't find out that his father had passed away until a few days later. Um, so even though he might be sitting Shiva now because he starts counting seven days from when he heard, but as far as his priority in saying Kaddish is concerned that that starts only from what the, that's that that is predated so to speak to count from the burial similarly if the death occurs on a Yom Tif, with regard to Kaddish we count from the day of burial even though the actual practice of sitting Shiva doesn't start until after the Yom Tif. now if there is also a yard site so until now we've been speaking about where you have somebody in Shiva and somebody after Shiva so somebody is in Week one, and there's another person there who's in 
the rest of the month, in, in, or in month five, or even in the first month, but after Shiv. So then the person in Shiva takes precedent over everybody else. What if there's also a yard site? So then in the shul, then if the person observing Shiva is a minor who attends services throughout Shiva at the synagogue, the yard site may say one Kaddish. Then the yard site may say one Kaddish. So the idea is like this. If the person sitting Shiva is under Bar Mitzvah, so he's coming to shul every day. So if he misses one Kaddish today, it's not the end of the world because he has a whole week to say Kaddish. He has a whole week to say this elevated status of Kaddish, of saying Kaddish in the first week. So therefore, if somebody has the art site, we're going to allow, we're going to tell the, this twelve-year-old child to forfeit one kaddish, and give it to the person saying art site because the art site has no other chance. If he had, doesn't say it now, he's not. This is how the Mishnah Bura explains it. If he, has to, if, the, if he doesn't say it now, tomorrow is not going to be a art site anymore. If there are many people observing art site, then each one may say one kaddish. Even if because of that, the minor who's observing Shiva is entirely excluded from saying Kaddish, right? So let's say, for example, again, it depends exactly on different Minhagim and which Kaddishim we count to be part of this, of the dividable Kaddishim. We're not going to get into that. But let's say for argument's sake, we have five Kaddishim that we could distribute here. And we have this child who's sitting in Shiva and we have five people who have yard site. Then each one of those five people are going to get one Kaddish and the child will remain with nothing. If there is a mourner observing Shloishim, he may also say one Kaddish. But there's a difference here between Shloishim and, and, and Yartzeth. But because what? If there are many observing Shloishim, then a minor who is observing Shiva is not entirely excluded because of them. Right? So basically, like this you have one 12 year old sitting Shiva, and you have five people with a Yartzeth. So each of the five people say a Kaddish, and the child sitting Shiva gets nothing. If, on the other hand, you have five people who are within in Shleishim in the month, then each of them get a Kaddish, except for one who's going to have to allow the child to get one, because we're not going to, we're not going to dismiss the person sitting Shiva with a zero Kaddishim unless he's being ousted by people who have yard site. If he's being ousted by people who have Shleishim, then we say he has to have at least one. Now that's all if the person sitting Shiva is a child on the Bar Mitzvah. And so he has seven days of Shiva to come to shul. But if the mourner is an adult who doesn't attend shul, he doesn't send services at the shul, even though he prays at home with a minion, nevertheless, yeah, all the other days, nevertheless, on the one day that he does come to shul with the Shabbos, he is entitled to say all the Kadeshim. And then if there's somebody who's observing your site is there, he will still say all the Kadeshim except for one Kaddish over which lots to, should be drawn to determine who will say it. So in such a case where the mourner who's sitting Shiva is only coming to shul on Shabbos, and there's somebody who has yard site on Shabbos, so then you make a girl, right? So practically speaking, this is a, that's, that, that's as much as possible, try and carry this down practically. Um, you have, um, you have a person, it's Shabbos, and there's a person in shul who's within the week of shiva, and there's another person in, sh in shul who's within, who's within, uh, who's um, who has yard site. Both of them want to say the kaddish after laning. So who says it? So lechayra, the answer would be um, that if they, the answer would be strictly that you have to draw a lot. Lechayra, except uh, yard site. Yeah, unless the person who has yard site is davening for the Ahmed, we'll see later that if the, if the person is davening for the Ahmed, then it works a bit differently. So if it's Shabbos and he's davening for the Ahmed, that would work a bit differently. But imagine, for argument's sake, the yard site person is not davening for the Ahmed. So then that would come down to drawing a lot, or maybe they could agree on some other way to, to figure it out. Uh, we had this in Beit Benachem just a few weeks ago, where um, usually these days after leaning on Shabbos, um, so Avram Berkovitz says the Kaddish, but a few weeks ago we had uh, Mendel and Moshe Moskowitz who were there. Now, it's a little bit different because you see, before the Kitzur Shonarach said that the time for the seven days starts after the burial. The Chabad custom is that we say Kaddish even before the burial. Right? So there, they, they were in Shul, it was before the burial, the Levi was on Sunday. So, but L'Chaira, 
based on the based on this simon, where I said that the Moskowitzes should say Kaddish because they are technically within Shiva, even though the burial hasn't happened, but uh, on some level they're within the seven days, and uh, therefore they take precedent over over um, uh, Avram Berker the say it. I have a question. Okay, let, let's just finish this this seat. Okay. Hold on. If the shiva was interrupted either because of intervening festival, his father's death occurred in a festival, then the law regarding a minor applies to him, since he may attend services at the synagogue daily, right? So the, the, this differentiation between an adult and a child is nothing to do with their age. It's got to do with how often are they coming to shul. Because the assumption is that the adult is only coming to shul on the one day of Shabbos, so we give him a lot of uh, precedent on that day. But if he's coming to shul every day of shiva, because let's say, um, it's it's Yom Tif. and like we said before, we, we're not as far as we're concerned here. It's not about when the morning of Shiva takes place. It's just about the seven day count. So then he'll have the same law as a minor because he he has other opportunities to say Kaddish within the Shiva in Shul. Yes. Oh, when you talk about we talk about or you talk about someone saying Kaddish, is this, does that have to do with someone saying it out loud so that everybody could hear? Uh, so right, that so, the others who don't have that precedence can just say it quietly. Is that right, what we're right, doing? So that, no, so the, that's what we do. In other words, our min, no, not even that. Our minhag is, again, the, the widespread minhag today amongst most communities is that everybody says Kaddish together. But the minhag right. used to be that only one person says each Kaddish. Um, only one person says each Kaddish and everybody else listens to him. That used to be the minhag. So again, in its literal sense, this simon is almost irrelevant nowadays. Uh, but it still has a lot of relevance because, like I said, it's relevant about who gets precedent to down for the Ahmed. It's relevant about who gets precedent to say um, to say the Kaddish after leaning. It's relevant to who gets precedent to get an Aliyah, who gets precedent to get Maftir, who gets and 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 yeah, all other things that there might be precedent for. And also, like I said, there's other things that we sort of see along the way. The concepts of mourning versus 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 Kaddish, the concepts of Chal seeing how society was in those days, etc. But in its very literal sense, it's not relevant to the way most communities uh, conduct themselves nowadays. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. A man and an adult who are observing Shiva have equal rights regarding Kaddish when they come to the shul on Shabbos. A person who is observing yard site is barred by the adults from saying Kaddish, like we said in the previous seat, Simon, in the previous seat, for number three. And therefore, the adults resides, in this case, one Kaddish more than the minor. That is, the Kaddish which the minor would have to give to the yard site. In other words, what he's saying is like this. You have, let's, let's just make him, let, let's for an argument's sake, cho choose the number six. Um, because just because that's easily to divide into two. So let's for argument say that in this in this service there's six kadeshin, right? So an adult observing Shiva on Shabbos, he completely knocks out the yard site. A child observing Shiva knocks out the yard site with the exception of one. He has to give the yard site one kadesh. So in this case, um, the minor and the adult are each sitting shiva. So if there would be no yard site in shul, we have two people sitting shiva and a minor and an adult. So the minor would get three kadeshim and their adult would get three kadeshim, right? But now that there's a yard site coming to shul, so the child has to give that kadesh to the yard site, but then the yard site has to give it back to the adult who's sitting shiva because the yard site only takes precedent over the child. He doesn't take precedent over adult, like we said in the previous seat. And therefore, what emerges is that the that that, that virtu the, the child virtually gives it to the yard and virtually gives it to the adult to the other adult sitting shiva, and so the child will say two kadeshim, and the adult will say the other guy will say four kadeshim. Um, okay, it's eight thirty one. We'll stop here. Um, I think next week we'll uh, again. I, I'm not sure if we need to take the time to go through. All of the laws in this seif, but maybe we'll, we'll, we'll summon, but maybe we'll skip a few and go on, and, and we we'll definitely will spend at least one more class on, on this chapter. Thank you.
Any questions? Thank you, Good night, Steve. Good night, Bob. Good night. Good night.